when you have followed my channel you will surely know that I was busy with a long wave radio reception and here is the TRF radio with a tuning capacitor but like I told earlier I want to make a super heterodyne for VLF say comparable to this by the way beautiful very properly working uh, VLF long wave that's what I mean long wave radio long wave here anyway I want to succeed in that uh, super heterodyne setup so I have to make an IF amplifier and I have already showed uh, in an earlier video that some IF amplifier but I want to do it all over again of course that's necessary when things don't work in electronics um, you have to do it all over again start a new throw say old circuits away try to get a new uh, vision a new look on uh, what you were making etc etc but uh, that all is related to this video where I want to tell something about the testing of intermediate frequency filters and there are quite a few not quite a few say in general two types of them that is the so-called coil filter that's here it's tuned to four five five kilo cycles and there are say ceramic filters or crystal filters crystal or ceramic that is in a certain way the same technology uh, this beautiful orange filter is tuned to a certain frequency and you can read that frequency on the filter and it is 432 kilo cycles and here it is 465 kilo cycles here say quite a bunch of 4555 sorry 455 kilo cycles filters etc you can test them with the test oscillator uh, and when you have followed my channel you have surely have seen this uh, say unit many many times it's a test oscillator made with a field effect transistor you can connect to the input both ceramic filters and coil filters and that means that you can set them to oscillation here and at the output of the test oscillator say the measuring oscillator you can read out the frequency and you can see the waveform so now we have here a four the counter tells us it's a four four two kilo cycles filter and the waveform is very good by the way when you want to use it uh, do some experiments there is a knob here with which you can set the, the oscillator to different frequency bands that's critical and also here the supply voltage is critical so let's see what happens when we get a too high supply voltage to the oscillator in combination with this crystal so let's see I now lift up the voltage and the whole oscillation stops not stops but say it's intermittent and that's of course not ideal anyway it doesn't have anything to do with the properties of the crystal filter the ceramic filter but anyway when you say set the oscillation to a certain value you have a beautiful waveform by the way sine wave it is a sine wave oscillator and you have here the frequency 442 kilo cycles but when we read here it is a 455 kilo cycles has everything to do with say the stray capacitance of the cables the um, a certain capacitance inside the oscillator 
But the most important thing is that you know that this is an active ceramic filter. It works. So that's the most important thing. Um, and here we have, again the schematic, where you know something about uh, superheterodyne, classic superheterodyne radios. That's what I mean, old school, analog. Uh, you know that the, there is a certain frequency band in that filter. And that frequency band is approximately 10 kilocycles or 8 kilocycles. So this filter here, but also this filter and the coil filter, this other filter, they all have a frequency band, a frequency range in the order of 10 kilocycles. And that's important because with a superheterodyne radio, the IF amplifier acts as a kind of, say, um, uh, tuned part here um, and um, it helps to get a very good selectivity when we tune in the local oscillator and uh, where the two frequencies go to the mixer, the, the antenna frequency and the local oscillator frequency and the IF amplifier has a small bandwidth and that makes that only, say, one specific radio station can be uh, received. Of course, there are certain problems also with the superheterodyne principle. And uh, what I wanted to tell is that we look as in a kind of window here. That a, a 10 kilocycles window or an 8 kilocycles window to all the frequencies that, that are, say, uh, available on short wave or medium wave, etc. Uh, this is the test oscillator here, and here it is in practice. There are two different capacitors here, one to the scope and one to the counter. They differ a little bit. Um, because otherwise you see distortion on the scope view, etc. As far as I know, this is 30 picofarad and this one is 15 picofarad. But correct me if I'm wrong, uh, when you see distortion on the scope, you can swap it. So this 15 picofarad and this one 30 picofarad. The schematic is on my YouTube channel and it's a very helpful test oscillator test transmitter. So now we have this uh, ceramic filter. Let me try to put in another filter. And I use this filter now here. It has three poles. And the filter that I showed earlier has two poles. And um, now I connect that filter to the test oscillator. Let's see if we can get oscillation here. Yes, it works. So this is a three-pole filter, but because uh, the simple fact that this this is say a ceramic tuned uh, electronic unit, uh, two poles are now used, and you can read here or see here. Um, the oscillation here of four, six, eight kilo cycles. Well, I have to limit the amplification of the test amplifier a little bit to get less noise here. Four, six, eight kilo cycles. And well, does that fit? We read here for six, five, and again that three extra kilo cycles have to do with the stray capacitance in the circuit. Now I'm going to test a coil filter. Uh, this filter here. I've tested it of course before this demo. Uh, it's named uh, 203 9 
Orton Tree, 2033017 HT. Anyway, it's a classical. You can also find, say, uh, these filters with other type numbers. Anyway, let's look what it can bring. And in such a filter, there are two different coils that are wound on the same form. One is the outcoupling that is here. These two is outcoupling. And this is the incoupling. And the incoupling is now connected to the test oscillator and it oscillates on 290 kilohertz. Well, that's so strange. Anyway, uh, with the another setting here of the test oscillator, we'll surely go to another frequency, I think. Anyway, well, that doesn't want to work. Could be that I have done some adaptation. Let me try again. I only have a few minutes, but anyway, let's try what this means. Well, uh, now I have connected it to two poles. Uh, well, anyway. Uh, this was not very successful, but you can surely, surely use this uh, test oscillator also with all these coils. And perhaps I have to connect it to the input of the coil. I have tested it already in the past, but of course I have forgotten how it really worked. Quite logical, anyway. No, I can't, I cannot get it again into oscillation, but anyway, you can surely test again with this test oscillator, the 455 kilo cycle coils. Here's another one of 455 kilo cycles. Let me do this. This is a coil filter, by the way, here, coil filter. I only have a few minutes anyway. So let's try again. It's in fact the same transformer that is inside here. Well, this works surely. You can see that it works. It is 455 kilocycles again. We have a beautiful, beautiful waveform. Four seven five kilocycles. Of course, I can trim. Trim this coil. Let me try to do it. I also want to show the schematic for a second time, but anyway. Put my so now my screwdriver is in here and I turn it. You can surely see here that the frequency changes. 486, 499, 490. Let me try to get to 455, 473, 466, yes, now I'm on approximately 455 kilocycles. The schematic finally, there's only one minute on my camera. Thanks for watching, of course, wish you luck. And all these say, uh, things can very easily be tested. Pen over somewhat. Here a big bunch of mini transformers, etc.